Grace and peace be with you this morning. We welcome all who are worshiping with us in person as well as those who are gathering with us online. For those who are worshiping at a distance, if you'd like to follow along with our worship service and share the readings and prayers, we invite you to access a copy of the bulletin found on our church's website. Near or far, it is good to be together. Today, we have the particular joy of celebrating a baptism as Jake, a young adult in our midst, comes to profess his faith and be baptized into the Christian family. You received in your bulletins a baptismal card. All who are here are invited to write a message of love, perhaps a prayer, maybe you have a favorite scripture passage or a poem, some note of Christian support. There are baskets of pens at each entryway if you should need one. We hope you'll take the time to write a message to Jake this morning, and then you're invited to leave that card in the offering plate you find also at each entranceway. They will be gathered up and shared with Jake and given to him that he might have an ongoing reminder of the Christian community of love and support that he has here. This is indeed a day of celebration. On another note, please note that the church office will be closed tomorrow, and we invite all of you to take home poinsettias. If, if you signed up for one or not, all of these poinsettias need homes. So if you or a loved one that you know might enjoy one, please feel free after the service to take one home with you. I invite those of you who are worshiping at home to join us now in lighting a candle that we might acknowledge the presence of Christ in our midst. Let us turn to God in an attitude of worship. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit that together we might share in the call to worship and find printed before you. We gather asking, where will we find the child of Christmas? We will find the child in the need of our individual where the Christ are set free. We gather wanting to know where will we find the Christ who has come for us. We will find our hope where the fear is overwhelmed by grace, where hatred is overwhelmed by love, where all people are overwhelmed by joy. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, 
you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? You accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. You confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the Church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. According to the grace given to you, Will you remain a faithful member of Christ's Holy Church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? The next portion is for you who are gathered here. Do you, as Christ's body, the Church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this person now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this person with a community of love and forgiveness, that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him, that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us all join together now in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son and Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and he who receives it, to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life, that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Friends, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. I invite the congregation to rise for its final commendation. Members of the household of God, I commend this person to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you. And we welcome you, Christian love, as members together with you in the body of Christ. And in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the Church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, 
our service and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen.
the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is Luke chapter 2, the first 20 verses. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now and to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be I'd like us to consider this morning, just for a few minutes, how we unwrap gifts. There are, of course, a whole lot of different ways of unwrapping gifts. There is the tear it open as fast and as furiously as possible. Picture it. Maybe you know somebody in your family who receives a gift and is so excited, so eager, so happy, they're bouncing at their seats and they begin to tear up the gift almost before it's completely in their hand, like a kid practically shredding the paper with enthusiasm. We can maybe picture that in our minds. The wrappings go flying everywhere. No amount of tape on the gift will slow them down. Ribbon is no match for them. Even double knots cannot deter such a person. And then once the gift is revealed, they respond with the same kind of unbridled joy. Thank you, this is fantastic, this is the greatest, oh wow, thank you so much. Picture someone just leaping with, and it's kind of exploding in the room with hugs and kisses as their zeal just echoes into every corner. That is one way to unwrap a gift, isn't it? Picture, maybe you know somebody in your family that unwraps it like that with that kind of energy. Now, of course, that's not the only way to unwrap a gift. Maybe you know someone who receives a gift with quiet joy, unspoken gratitude. They let the gift sit for a long time in their lap with, with this unspoken gratitude. They kind of savor the moment. They notice the bow. They read the card slowly and with intent. And then they carefully trace the lines of the paper to figure out exactly where the tape is. And then they run their hand along and carefully dislodge it, making sure that they don't tear the paper. And then with patience and attention, they remove the paper from the gift. 
And if there is a ribbon, it's been neatly untied, taking whatever time is needed to undo any bows or knots, and then maybe gently rolling the ribbon up into a nice neat loop around her hand. And then before even looking at the gift, they carefully fold up the paper that they've removed and set it aside. Such an approach is, is disciplined, gentle, it's careful. And then once the gift is open, with joy and gratitude, they express deep thanks, but with simple, quiet words. Maybe it's known in the look on their face, or the well-chosen words that they shared, or, or maybe just the gratitude we see in their eyes. That's another way to open a gift, isn't it? Surely there are lots of ways in between those two extremes. Think for a moment, if you would, about each member of your family. How do they unwrap a gift? What's your style? Is one way right, one way wrong? Of course not, right? Any method for unwrapping a gift can be an expression of absolute gratitude and joy. There are lots of ways of unwrapping a gift. We celebrate Christmas because of the tremendous gift that has been given to us in Jesus Christ. God decided to join us in this life, to embrace our world, embrace our lives, God sent the Son into the world and said, here, here is the greatest gift of all. And with joy, I give it to you. Out of love, we're given love. Out of hope, we are given hope. Out of God's great power, we are given salvation in a newborn child named Jesus. There is no greater gift. Now, Many of us receive that gift and respond with exuberance. They're, they're very verbal about their faith. They leave no mystery as to exactly how they feel about Jesus Christ. They unwrap this gift with gusto, and they declare their thanks loudly. Think about the people you know who, for whom talking about faith comes so easily. Those who can easily pray out loud in public or are quick to volunteer for those overt forms of sharing the gospel. Meanwhile, many others may receive this same sacred gift and express the same faith and the same gratitude, but in more subtle, quiet ways. They are no less grateful. They are unwrapping the gift with a delicate kind of awe, holding it tenderly, even cautiously, acknowledging in their lives the tremendous gift that they have received. We think about those who have diligent yet private prayer lives, or those who work in soup kitchens or food pantries, but may never put faith language to what they're doing, and may never call attention to the motives behind their lives. Today, we celebrate the fact that we have received the unparalleled gift of grace in the manger. How have you received that gift? How will you unwrap this precious offering in your heart and in your life in the year to come. I think for a moment again about your, your family. How does each member of your family express their faith, in, for this, their gratitude for this gift of Jesus Christ? How is their unwrapping of the gift, their expression of faith, made manifest in their living? Each holds each different avenue, holds a different kind of value. They all are of, of beauty. The only misfortune when it comes to receiving this gift is if the gift remains unwrapped. I'm sorry, if the gift remains unopened and it's lost or forgotten under the tree. The only misfortune is when the gift is still waiting to be received. The scripture tells us that when the angels had left the shepherds and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. And the shepherds then returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. You hear the way they're unwrapping this gift? Let's go. They went with haste. They made known to everybody who would listen all that they had been told. They glorified and praised God, and everybody who heard their words were astonished. You hear the tone? 
There's explicit energy in their action. This precious gift is vigorously and enthusiastically received in overt ways in the shepherd's lives. You can practically see the wrapping paper scattered on the floor. And then we get to that verse that's tucked in those other lines. Verse 19 says, but Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. It's a different tone entirely. She conveys the mystery of the experience. Her response communicates that part of faith that can easily be put into, the, into words. She is no less grateful, no less blessed, but she models a, a quiet, reflective way to receive the gift this Christmas. It's a different way to unwrap the gift. The gift of Christ is given to each one of us. God gives this Savior with joy to you and to me. We each receive and hold that gift differently. How we express our gratitude and how we show our joy will widely vary. Friends, as this day proceeds and as the days to come unfold, let's pay attention to how we receive the gift of God's love. How will you unwrap this treasure in the year to come? Let us pray. Lord God, your arrival in our lives is a miracle and a mystery. You invite us to receive the gift of life eternal, the, the embodiment of love. May our response be as authentic as your gift. Amen. I invite you to rise that we might together share the Christmas affirmation you find in your book. Let the love that shaped heaven and earth dwell within us this Christmas. Let the love that overcomes suffering and hatred dwell within us this Christmas. Let the love that gives and dwell within us this Christmas. Let the love that brings the gift of peace dwell within us this Christmas.